create with Franz Sydney. Create the life you want. Hello everyone and welcome to Create with Franz. We are today doing episode 61 and the topic will be, as I said before, all about kindness and why kindness can make us so much happier than if we are rude and ungrateful and whatever else. Why talk about kindness? It's because it's one of the main things that can make us happy. Just like doing a little bit of art, just like doing sport and or meeting with a family and with loved ones, kindness is one of these things that really make us feel you know, this is it, I really love it. And it makes us feel happier generally, even if it's not uh, been returned from other people to us. And this happens because it really resonates with the human soul. And I've got a lot of credit to give to Dr. Hamilton, who talks about it. And he's really a, a big pharma worker. He is developing, or well, he has developed for many years, and medicines for cardiovascular disease, for cancer. But the research that he has really focused on in the last 10, 15 years is really about kindness and what happens to our heart when we use kindness. Is it true that kindness can make us feel happier? And he says it is possible. And I wanted to share a little study that he was quoting in one of his many talks. He said that uh, some researchers had asked some volunteers to do five acts of kindness once a week for six weeks. And there were two groups, the placebo group, you know, the group that didn't know what they were counting or doing, and the other group that was supposed to be kind at least once a week. And um, they did very small things like um, maybe making a cup of tea for somebody or maybe showing that they were grateful, nothing really amazing and majestic, but just small things every day. And that was a specific day, I think it was a Friday. And in the end, the, the researchers compared the two groups and the group that was kind was a lot happier than the first group. And that's why I think both Mr. Hamilton and I will say it really feels right to do something good. It is one of the things that can make the human being happy. Maybe some of us will think that naturally speaking people are not very good, but actually we are wired to help one another because when we grow in a community we, we need to survive by relying on other people, our family and our extended groups of friends and this is probably how we survived over millions of years by creating strong bonds, by being kind and being very kind and by showing compassion to other people. Who knows, maybe those who were kind survived for longer than those who were not. I don't know because I haven't really checked but uh, certainly working together be united requires a very high degree of compassion and kindness so we don't hurt one another and uh, i really liked reading about um, a practice that he, uh, he was made by the buddhist monks i think and um, they have a kind of meditation they saying things like uh, may you be loving and kind may you be well may you be felt with love and kindness and they do this over and over and they project it out to the people, to the rest of the planet. And the researchers went to study these Buddhist monks and they said that the words that they say and the intention that they have causes physical changes in the brain and therefore in all their body. And of course they seem to be very peaceful people. Now if you look around in the world there isn't much peace, but we can certainly create this peace in our heart by saying good words and by believing these good words and thinking good about other people. Of course, I don't want to be misinterpreted. If you have a really bad idea about a person because they are really bad at hurting someone or lots of people, this doesn't mean that you have to suddenly fall in love with them, but at least kindness can somehow give the benefit of doubt and help us to see things perhaps from another point of view, just to give us a little bit of a yeah, benefit of that, really being grateful for what we have and looking at others because nobody's perfect. And we give them this little chance, a little grace 
instead of attacking them all the time. So we've always said in the past that this, there is this great power that the words have. The words create our reality. Not only that, but also what we do and how we interact with other people. If we are cold or warm, that can really change our reality. And um, let's make a little connection with something that happens in our body. You probably know that oxytocin is very well known. You know, it's something that all women know about because when you give birth, uh, naturally you also have usually a wave of oxytocin. Also, you can have that when you breastfeeding. And um, this oxytocin has been measured as present in our body in waves when we have a warm contact with pets, with children, with any other human, when it's a warm hug, something like feeling close to somebody, we have this wave of calmness um, that I remember feeling when I was breastfeeding my children. And it's very good and when you then stop breastfeeding and nursing them, you see the difference that this calmness is gone. It's almost like a drug, it's amazing but it's uh, not as addictive in a bad way. And so what does oxytocin do? It has a really calming effect on the entire cardiovascular system and it really causes the production of something interesting, the nitric oxide, and that makes all the arteries and the heart to expand naturally and easily so that if you have a high pressure, that can drop to the normal level. So it has really a protective effect on the, on the heart. Isn't that why doctors said, I think it was a joke, but maybe it's true, that 16 hugs a day takes a doctor away. We all need lots and lots of hugs. So if you have children or pets, if you have a husband or wife, if you have a friend that would like a hug, you know, give them a hug because it's a very good thing for you. And, you know, you can't be rude to somebody if you're hugging them. So kindness and hugs go together. Isn't that amazing? And researchers have been focusing more and more on seeing what happens with kindness and compassionate behavior that expand these arteries. They even picked up experiments to do in a test in a laboratory, right? And they picked up um, test, test tubes. And in these test tubes, they put some cells they were very, very stressed from free radicals, inflammation, lifestyle, you name it, they had it. And then in those cells, they added oxytocin and up to 48% of reduction of inflammation levels was recorded. 48% would be amazing to achieve in the pharmaceutical world. And it was so amazing to reach for them in vitro. And this can probably translate into the same thing when it happens into, into the human body. One of the stories that I remember from Dr. Hamilton was in a little town in the States called Roseto, and apparently they had the smallest ever number of people that were dying of heart disease. And the researchers went to see why these people were not having the usual problem, you know, a sad diet, etc. But no, their diet was just the same as everyone else, and there was nothing special in the water of their town. But what they realized in the end, after recording everything possible about these very happy people, they didn't have heart disease, or not enough to die from it, is that they had a really high degree of bonding and connection with all their population in this small place. They knew one another, they knew all the names of the children, they were friends with one another, and so that was very protective for them. So if you think about it, in the societies where people live a very long life, such as in those small islands, um, one of them, <laughs> I don't know the name, in uh, Japan, you know, the blue zone, and also in Sardinia, where I'm actually from, you have people that live up to nine, maybe 90, 95, even to 100. And sometimes you see there's a very low level of heart problems, dementia, etc. And I think, you know, the researchers have really touched something there because when you know that you're in a community where you are filled with kindness and you appreciate it and when you're older, you're not seen as a waste. You're actually seen as a very high and very good resource. So people try to uh, treat you, not try to, they treat you with respect and they, they love you and they cuddle you. Don't you think you would live longer? Of course you do. 
So you can say that being kind is very good for our health. What happens to our relationship with other people? And what happens to us when we are kind to them? Or when we are hostile and we are domineering? Well, there are problems as well. So there is another reason why we should be kind in our thought first and then in our action. And of course, there is another study that has been conducted about marital conflict relations and coronary artery calcifications. And in this study, the doctors or the scientists picked up 130 married couples and they asked them to talk, each in a separate place, about a marital challenge that they had. These people just were able to talk in the normal way, they didn't have to do anything special. Some of these people were displaying such hostile and aggressive behavior you would tell there was an issue there. Others, still talking about a very good marital challenge, they were showing warm contact. They were very, very different and they're not domineering like the other ones. And when the researchers looked up all the data, they saw that the people who had a relationship where they exchange ideas in a warm way, they had a protection to their heart. So high levels of conflict and domineering behavior was actually a cause of heart disease. And what was suggested in the end of the study was that when we have a warm connection in our marital relationships, and of course that can extend to anything else, this allows the production of oxytocin in our body. And this is so good for helping those cardiovascular vessels to be at optimal health levels. So we have what we call a ripple effect. And so this is kind of interesting because we always, you know, we can be full of problems, we can be stressed, everyone has overwhelm, we might have depression, mental problems, we might have an abusive relationship, there could be loads of problems. But it's also very important to know that people also have their own problems. Sometimes we just don't know they have them and so being kind and just think twice before speaking some harsh words can really make a difference in our heart and in theirs and it really wires our brain in a nice way that helps us to live better, to be more grateful for what we have and be helpful with other people. And I just want to um, close with a really fun story that has been shared and, and it really made me laugh, but um, it really talked about the ripple effect of being kind. And as far as I know, this is a true story and I think it happened in Scotland and there was um, a driver in the night that was going somewhere and was near a hill and it was winter and it was night, it was late and this guy was driving along the road when he saw a young man who was walking by the road and he was carrying up the hill a very heavy television. And so this guy wanted to be kind, so he stopped and asked the young man, hey, can I help you? The young man said, oh no, don't worry. But the man jumped up of the van and said, no, 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 I really want to help you. So there was no way that the young man could do any discussion. So this man picked up a heavy television and put it back into, into his van and then said to the man, where do I take you? He took him up the hill and then down the hill. And then the young man said, yeah, just stop here. So the, the driver dropped him off, very happy to have done something good. And uh, the young guy said, um, can I pay you? And the other guy said, no, 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 I don't want any money. You know, you just did not want anything. He just said, you know, our life is going to be better. It's just going to go back to you, this is a ripple effect, we're all going to be happier, the world is going to be great. The young man was impressed, you know, wow, wish we were taught this in school. He was totally inspired. So anyway, the van driver went away to do some of his things and later on he went back to that area and found the same young man walking back to the same hill where he picked him up before, carrying a TV. And so the van driver thought, hold on a minute, what on earth is he doing? So he pulled over. And he said, excuse me, my friend, but I took you all the way up and down this hill 
why are you going back right there? And so the young man responded, you know what you said before about paying it forward? Well, I stole the TV, so I'm taking it back. Now, you might think it's a joke, but uh, the ripple effect is real. And when you do something kind, most of the times you will see that something comes back that is good for you. We shouldn't do it for that, but I think it really warms up our heart, makes us feel more peaceful, more kind to the world if we start thinking differently and if we start something with positive, a positive sentence and something nice. And uh, that reminds me a little bit of giving feedback. If you remember, quite a few episodes ago, I said that if you use the sandwich te- technique to give feedback, we can help people to improve. So when people ask us, how was so-and-so thing that I did? We can always say, okay, in the sandwich we put one good thing and that is going to build up this person. Then we say, okay, the one thing that I would improve is X, Y, Z. And then we close with something that remarkable that the person has done so he feels like he can trust us, he can have a truth, but also that we appreciate them. And perhaps this is something we can all make an effort to develop, just to be a little bit more kind, because not only is good for our heart, but it's good for the whole world. And that's the end of the episode for today. Just wanted to celebrate all the good things that you guys are doing in the world. Some of these things are completely unseen. Nobody knows about them. But you know, somebody up there knows and your heart knows. And that's all that counts. Thank you for being with me today. And I hope to talk to you very, very soon. In the next episode, I will be talking about some daily habits that we can all use to improve our relationships at home. So stay tuned and I hope to see you clicking and sharing the episode and please if you found it useful share it with a friend that needs something kind in his life and maybe write a review they're always so helpful for me so that more people can listen to the podcast and find a little bit of help with our mental emotional issues and with just finding a little bit more happiness in their life so again thank you for being with me and take care bye bye you've listened to create with Franz Sidney.